What is up, ladies and gentlemen? I am here, finally, playing Metal Gear Solid 3. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Saga, in fact. The entire series, we're going through it all. I actually did this in my past life. When I had first started up my Let's Play channel. And uh, got through, I think, I think it was right before 5 came out. I got through 3, Peace Walker, 1, as in Metal Gear Solid for the PlayStation because I have what's called a legacy collection and it comes with it. Uh, so not the Twin Snakes, which is the remake. I have the uh, the uh, original on uh, for Sony PlayStation. And then I think I got maybe through part of two. I don't know if I beat two. Um, but yeah, so I, I had gone through them, uh, but rebranding and over time, uh, we're getting back to it. So buckle in, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 definitely has... Uh, uh, Decent amount of cutscenes and story, not as bad as Metal Gear Solid 4, and not as much gameplay as Metal Gear Solid 5. But um, uh, we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go through it. Um, let's go ahead. Yeah, let's check it out. 1964. Um, I will be, will actually be technically playing on a big screen. So these are live streamed now. If anybody uh, happens to catch these, uh, they are live streamed. Um, I've got everything going through Streamlabs on this monitor, but I'm actually playing on a big screen, so my television is above me, uh, so I might miss out on chat if there is chat. Um, but yeah, that is why I will be looking up. So 1964, Virtuous Mission and Operation Snake Eater. The origin of Metal Gear, Sir, uh, Metal Gear series begins in 1964 at the height of the Cold War. Naked Snake, the man who would later become the legendary soldier known as Big Boss, heads into Soviet territory to help the scientist Sokolov defect to the West. However, the mission ends in failure when Snake's mentor, a female soldier known as the Boss, unexpectedly unexpectedly defects to the Soviet Union. The fate of the world hanging in the balance, Snake is forced to question the true meaning of loyalty as he embarks on a lone mission to kill his former mentor. Wow, spoiler alert, right from the get-go. I didn't even know it. I said that right there. So, that's, uh, that's Metal Gear Solid 3. I'm not gonna be trying to get a bunch of Easter eggs. I'm not trying to go through all this, just the different things you can do. This game has a ton of Easter eggs, a ton of fun, time paradoxes, and I'm going to be trying to collect all the items. I will be trying to do as much of a, a non-lethal run-through as possible. Um, the bosses, however, I will probably kill the bosses because their health meters go down faster than their stamina meters. Um, I'm not going to be playing on European Extreme. I did that in the past. Uh, it's fun. Um, you basically just lose uh, as soon as you're detected, uh, detected by the enemy. Apology for um, uh, the mouth words. I uh, got my aligners in. Straighten out them babies. Um, you know, a little fun stuff. Like if you click in the right stick, you can change the uh, color. Click in the left stick, you can change the camo pattern. If you move the left stick around, you can move the camo pattern. Uh, the right... I don't think the right technically does anything. Um, but yeah, so uh, technically this is one of the... This is the game where it's 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 advantageous to no kill to take down targets non-lethally. Um, I'm gonna be playing a normal difficulty. Um, I think even on European difficulty, you can probably just run up on soldiers and slam them into the ground. But what one thing that's nice is you can pretty much just as long as nobody else sees you or hears you, um, you can run th run right up to them and they will hear you and detect you and turn around as you'll see. But you can just grab them and slam them on the ground. You could always shoot out the radio. There's a whole bunch of shit. Um, but you know, this is just a series out of all the series that I love. Metal Gear is, uh, you know, and Kojima loves I think loves foxes as much as I do. So I'm not gonna complain. Foxes are great. I love them. Um, uh, and, and you know, I'm going to get some gameplay out of it, but definitely some of them are more story oriented. And, uh, you know, we're going to be we're going to be in it for the long haul because we're not going to be skipping cutscenes or anything like that. Um, one thing to note about Metal Gear 3, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, um, Snake Eater. Is that contains Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2, Solid Snake, well before Metal Gear became solid. Uh, this is actually the story of the character in this who you play and who becomes Big Boss um, at the beginning of this, just, you know, called Naked Snake. Uh, in So it's one of the game series that you play Metal Gear, well, you know, Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2, which are difficult because they're like S, not SNEX. Is it SNEX? Man, I can't even remember what platform it was on. Um, Top-down, pixelated games, Rosewood. Uh, <laughs> but... I don't even think most people played those. They played Metal Gear Solid, and they played Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, and then Metal Gear Solid 3 comes out, which is a prequel, 
And basically, quite a few of the characters from this are... The, the reason for this is because the characters in this are brought into fourth. It's one of those game series that does one, two, three is the prequel, and the prequel is meant to introduce characters you're going to meet in the sequel, <laughs> which is really weird. But it's never really clear why Snake and Big Boss have the relationship they do, and that's because, metal, unless you read like the, the wikis and stuff like that in the actual timeline, um, that's because Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 show show that relationship a little bit obviously in just kind of like text form but most people i don't think play metal gear we might not play metal gear i might take a look at them they are from a day and age when games are difficult even this game you know can be difficult uh compared to metal gear solid 5 metal gear solid 5 is one of those games that it, you you it feels good it feels good to stealth it and go in action because you really feel like you're controlling how that character is portrayed portrayed Meaning a sick, quick, so fat, uh, such a badass. They're so fast, nobody else can handle them on the battlefield. And that's what I like. In this game, it's very much more deliberate. It's not as fluid. And it's, you know, it's a PlayStation 2 game. Uh, but, I, I, you know, now it, there are difficult games nowadays, like Dark Souls and, and stuff like that, and Demon Souls. Um, but still, games back in the day were were difficult because they were just difficult, not like they were going out of their way to make them difficult, it feels like. That could be horribly wrong way of looking at it. But when you think about Dark Souls, they made it a point to just make it hard. Whereas this is just coming from a day and age where it's like, well, you're going to be, you know, games are expensive. You don't have that many. You're going to be playing them over and over again. Games are just dip more difficult. Same, same with controls before analog and all that different stuff. So even Metal Gear Solid 3, this one is, is kind of... You know, it's from a time where like you have to do things kind of deliberately. You can't just run, jump, dive, sprint, get up, shoot somebody, run, slam somebody. It's not it's not that intuitive. Um, but yeah, so we might take a look at Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, but I'm not too worried about actually playing them. <laughs> Bring a new game. Um, I think these kind of change some of the controls. Um, I do like Metal Gear Solid 3. European Extreme. I thought the first time I ever played this... European Extreme meant you couldn't also kill people. You can kill people. It's just the game ends when being seen by an enemy. Um, uh, I'm, the only reason really not to kill people is because of one of the boss fights called the Sorrow. Um, you basically wade through a pool or a, like a long river and everybody you've killed up until that point shows up. I don't know if that happens with the boss. Like I said, probably the bosses I'm going to go ahead and take out lethally because it's a lot faster. Um, but yeah, European Extreme. I don't know if like on normal versus European Extreme, if you can run up on people a lot easier on normal than you can on European Extreme, um, but we're going to play on normal. And the only reason else to not kill the bosses is to get their camo patterns, um, but I'm not worried about that. I did all that on European Extreme. After the end of World War II, the world was split into two, East and West. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. Yeet. Yeet. Rosewood is with us. This is also really the... I think Metal Gear Solid 2 had a tranquilizer gun, too, if I'm not mistaken. I think it did. But they do paint these games as, like, especially the third one. Hey, your guy really never killed a lot of people. He tranked a lot of people until you get to Metal Gear Solid 5. And Peace Walker's fighting a bunch of robots. But it's kind of interesting. This game series always feels like, oh, your character never killed people. They're just so badass. They were tranking him and knocking him out. But that's not actually really the case it wasn't until metal gear solid 3 felt like they really pushed the trank guns and then that rolled into four of course drop zone still showing a high pressure mass cab okay good we've got high visibility press triangle control a little bit of the camera oh it's actually uh, written by a couple people Put out that cigar. Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. Put on your mask. Does this panty waste know what he's doing? Approaching release point. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, are you deaf? 
said put out the cigar and put on your mask. Depressurization complete. Checking oxygen supply. Six minutes to drop off. Opening rear hatch. It's always fun to see, you know, they just commented on the world's first Halo jump. It's always fun to see somebody like Hideo uh, take stories that are factual. Um, they talk about, you know, the Cold War, the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, you know, that whole standoff between America and, uh, and Russia and whoever else may have been involved um, and weave their own story. These characters... Are, are fictional, but they've intertwined it into real life events, which is really cool. No, the virtuous mission. The future of our Fox unit depends on it. Look at that it fucking eight millimeter film, dog. Virtuous mission. Sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. You know, don't get cocky. This isn't a training op. Right. So what exactly is this wonderful mission? Well, about two years ago. A certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. He's head of the OKB-754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top secret weapon research facilities, and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov? Isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. On I don't know if this is actual a real character or a fictional Soviets character made for this game. Man space flight in history. Sokolov, I mean. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development Become the head of the newly established design bureau. From a lowly technician to head of a design bureau, that's quite a success story. So why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. Used a mole to get the family out first and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. And it was only a week later that we had something much bigger on our hands. The Cuban Missile Crisis. October the 16th, 1962. President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were in the process of deploying intermediate range ballistic missiles in Cuba. The president demanded that the Soviets dismantle and remove the missiles. At the same time, he announced a naval blockade to prevent further missile shipments from reaching Cuba. But the Soviets didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert, 
Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. US and Soviet forces went on alert for an all-out nuclear war. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair-trigger standoff. Finally, on October the 28th, the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba. And so the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. But in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out, we had to make a deal. You mean the one where the US agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete. And we were going to get rid of them anyway. <laughs> they had no strategic value whatsoever to either the US or the Russians. The Turkey deal was a ruse, a cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. So what did the Russians really want? Sokolov. They wanted us to return Sokolov. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? That's right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time. It was either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. President Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital, handing him over to agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept on screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my sight. Then a month ago, we received some new information from one of our moles. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. So what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No. Missile. Same technology. I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be a new kind of nuclear device. For half a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests at semi-palatinsk. Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. Is Sokolov still in the facility? No. According to our intelligence, he's in Selino Yask, a place in the mountains about three miles to the west that's known as the Virgin Cliffs. The Virgin Cliffs? Nice name for a virtuous mission. They moved him there just recently. Why? Apparently, they're conducting a field test of the weapon, but it's our best chance to get him back. This mission would never have been possible if he was still in the research facility. This is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that too when he contacted us. And strap in part one. This whole part is going to be a lot of, you know, it's set up in tutorial. So. Listen up, Jack. Your mission is to infiltrate Selino Yask in the Soviet mountains, ensure the safety of Sokolov, and bring him back to the West. I can do that. Thank you. Facing a major crisis. I just realized the text has text the behind it. Ticking. Like it's a reflection. Like it's offset. <laughs> and I'm I'm once we've confirmed the rescue circle off, stand by at the recovery point. I'm not recovery too worried. Oh yeah, the recovery balloon. The, the Fulton recovery system. That bitch is a staple in Metal Gear Solid 5. Actually, in Peace Walker. Yeah. Take it easy. It's been combat proof. Do you think Sokolov is up to it? But if I set off alarms and stuff like that, I'm not too worried about. Oh, we should reset and stuff like that. I'm gonna try to make it fun. So you're planning on going over the border in a single combat talent? She's equipped with two six-barrel 20mm Vulcan cannons, as well as two 40mm machine guns. Sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks. Even with the fuel in the reserve tank, we're facing a four-hour time limit. If 
all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Home in time for dinner. But if anything goes wrong, you'll be eating dinner, breakfast, and all the rest of your meals in the jungle. I don't know why they nodded and smiled at each other, and that makes me hella skeptical. Controller down. Oh, no, never mind. I thought it was gonna go to another one. I'm coming in hot, dog! Yeah! Fuck. Tree! A tree stole my backpack! Damn you, tree! Nice. He landed right at the edge of that cliff, by the way. That bitch was real close. Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. <laughs> I like how it has the title right there on his helmet. We have made it to Russia. Don't need this. Don't need that. Just gonna leave that here as evidence. <laughs> it does a US... Why the fuck would you put US Army on your head if, if you're not sanctioned to be there? Hold on. Rethink that. <laughs> I want to rethink that plan, fam. Do you copy? You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? You've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant, but... Be careful. You might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Hmm, let's see. I'll be... I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. Even though it says code name Major Zero. Oh, never mind, it changed. Oh shit! I never realized that. It actually changed. That clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox Unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment to procure on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Great. Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. Gotcha. Getting back to the subject, how exactly am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I lost I that lost bitch. A tree on the way down. I love my I backpack. Well, you'd better go back and get it then. You know where it is? I do. No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. To climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's covered in ivy and press the action button. That's all I got. Says the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. Classic. You can't risk violating Soviet airspace, but I'll be in the gunship. My frequency is. Feels like Japanese origin because, like, okay, but which button is the I'll action button? If I need to talk to you. We haven't established that, you so unless you me, use the read the manual. Okay, Snake. Go get your backpack. Oh yeah. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna try to get through this. I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time talking about fucking controls and all that stuff. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can can and can do. But first, I need my backpack. I want to get you. Triangle does that, and then I think circle drops you. He dropped himself, but you know. I see you've retrieved your backpack. Snake. I have. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. 
Your available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip and press the enter button. There's a whole bunch of equipment we are not going to be using. Same thing from me powering through. Use the survival viewer backpack. Yep, that's right. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop. If your stamina gets too low, it'll affect your performance. Mm. You won't be able to shoot accurately, for example, and your wounds won't heal as smoothly. I've never had that problem, even, even on European Extreme. That was never a... To recover lost stamina, you can hunt for local a flora big factor. and fauna. You can use either your tranquilizer gun or your knife to hunt. My only weapon is a Mark 22 Hush Puppy tranquilizer gun. That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy with it. The suppressor's durability is shown in the icon. Any weapons and equipment beyond what you're carrying now, you'll have to find as you go. I have to find my own weapons and equipment? Whose crazy idea was this anyway? Solo covert actions. I love it because they make it seem like this motherfucker was dropped in and not told jack shit. Footprints, sweat, or bodily waste. The same goes for bullets and cartridges, too. Your presence in enemy territory is already a violation of international conventions of warfare. There aren't supposed to be any American soldiers in Russia. It could spark an international incident. You can't let anyone see you, you can't let the enemy know you're there. This is a stealth mission. You're a ghost snake in every sense of the word. And there'll be no rescue if you're captured. The military and U.S. government will deny any involvement in the affair. Then I'll just have to take care of myself, huh? I'm afraid so. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. <clears throat> SIS guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one be issued a potassium cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. How generous of you. I like how this works for gameplay purposes. It will send you into a state of false death for a short time. But I don't know. Pulling them into thinking that I'm really dead. So how do I come back to If life? you're just take the revival. <laughs> the revival pill. You mean that thing they put I don't think that's a mission. that's a real thing. That's the one. But be careful. If you remain in a state of false death for too long, nothing will be able to bring you back. Remember that. Uh I'll keep it in mind. You said this was a solo mission, right? Right. I guess that means I can't count on any reinforcements. Correct. The mission rests entirely in your hands. A real one man army. I forget what it is, but there is a, a drug that will put you in a near death state so nobody can tell, but then you just come out of it after a while. If you were in a near death state, there's no way you'd be able to administer the thing that brings you back. So it's it's fun for gameplay purposes, but acting as a medic. So I don't think that's a thing. As well as recording your mission data. She's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She. Hello, Snake. I'm paramedic. Nice to meet you. He didn't even know she was on a fucking tr as an plane, dog. Aren't you going to tell me your real name? Are you going to tell me yours, Mr. Snake? My name, huh? It's John Doe. And they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. They literally just drink. said, don't no use your real names. And I What's don't know name? if his real name is Jack Jane or not. Doe. Very funny. I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. My frequency is 145.73. She's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency. 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Uh -huh. Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary soldier and your mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? She also helped me plan this mission. And I were at Do SIS you team. remember the boss? Jack, is that yes, you? he remembers the then? fucking boss. Boss? That's right. It's me. I just realized they faded out the forest noises. Let me hear your voice. It's been five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. You've lost weight. You can tell just by the sound of my voice. 
Of course I can. I know all about you. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. Hmm. You didn't need me anymore. But there were still so many things I wanted you to teach me. No, I taught you everything you needed to know about fighting. We're also weapons. about to get a uh, philosophical discussion needed to learn on immediately at the start. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? I can't teach you that. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. In fact, technique doesn't even matter. What's most important is spirit. Spirit and body are like two sides of a single coin. They're the same thing. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Listen he is kind of like a baby. Just because soldiers are on the same side right now doesn't mean they always will be. Having personal feelings about your comrades is one of the worst sins you can commit. Politics determine who you face on the battlefield. And politics are a living thing. They change along with the times. Yesterday's good might be tomorrow's evil. Is that why you abandoned me? No, it had nothing to do with you. I already told you, Jack. I was on a top secret mission. A soldier has to follow whatever orders he's given. It's not his place to question why. But you're looking for a reason to fight. You're a natural born fighter, but you're not quite a soldier. A soldier is a political tool, nothing more. That's doubly true if he's a career soldier. Right and wrong have no place in his mission. He has no enemies and no friends. Only the mission. You follow the orders you're given. That's what being a soldier is. I do whatever I have to to get the job done. I don't think about politics. That's not the same thing. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end, you have to choose whether you're going to live as a soldier or just another man with a gun. There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. I follow the president and the top brass. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. The president and the top brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader, no matter who's in charge. People aren't the ones who dictate the missions. Then who does? The times. <clears throat> People's values change over time, and so do the leaders of a country. So there's no such thing as an enemy in absolute terms. The enemies we fight are only enemies in relative terms, constantly changing with the times. As long as we have loyalty to the end, Classic snake there's grunt. no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. And that's the way a soldier's supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. All right, but do me a favor. What is it? Call me Snake. Snake? Oh, right. Your code name is Snake. It suits you well. That's right. The legendary unit. Like, the did she just use his real name? Snake, the Cobra unit. A group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world. Anyway. As long as you've got a legendary hero backing you up, you'll be fine. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah. Threw me. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have with me. Oh, and one more thing, boss. Yes? It's good to hear your voice again. Same here. After all, who knows if either of us will make it out alive. Yeah, he is very See, much a baby. You are always best at urban warfare and infiltrating buildings. But this is the jungle. Survival is going to be key. Those CQC techniques I taught you are sure to come in handy. CQC? Close quarters combat, huh? I've been in the Green Berets for the past few years. I'm probably pretty rusty. Not to worry. I'll be here to help you remember. After all, this is your first actual survival mission. I'll be supporting you over the radio. Where are you, boss? Next to the major. And you can call all these people, which I'm not. I'm not trying to fuck with. This game could go on for 30 years. I don't know how much dialogue they've actually recorded, but you can just keep calling these people and having conversations. But I ain't trying to do that. Dr. Sokolov is being held in an abandoned factory located to the north of your current position. 
Avoid heavy combat and don't let anyone see you. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. I also don't know if knocking people out or uh, tranking them is uh, uh, which one lasts longer. Try to remember some of the basics of CQC. And this is weird, too. He's like, do you remember the boss? And it's like, yeah, he obviously had a huge emotional connection. He was butthurt that she just left him without without telling him. But I'm pretty sure they helped invent CQC together. So that's kind of throws me off, but whatever. Let's do it. Let's go fuck some people up. I have four suppressors. Oh, shit. What the fuck? Did that just widen my camera? Hold on. Just clicked in the right stick. Oh shit, it does. Oh yeah, that's what it is. So I forgot when this. I think when this game first came out, it was a locked off camera. You didn't ha have like actually have control. It just did this. It stayed wide from them. But then if you press, you know, so many people nowadays, we're we're used to like a hundred percent, you know, controlling our our cameras. So this feels better and more natural to play like than than this does. But man, I forgot the the game even did that because I want to be able to look over here. Like if you're locking me off, I'm like. But yeah, I and I guess that's it. It plays like an old metal, like an actual Metal Gear game. So I'm pretty sure those are actually like real endangered crocodiles. I could take my knife out. I could whoop their ass. I could get food from them, but I'm not worried about it. The way food, uh, you got all your camouflages. You know, of course we'll fucking put the woodland on uh what gives me the most plus 30 i'll go with that for now that's fine uh backpack i think uh the more stuff you have on you the more uh meaning not in your backpack like have it actually equipped actually drains your stamina faster so i'm not worried about any of that stuff. I don't remember where all the enemies are, but this is the type of game where when you get good at it, you don't even need that shit anyways. And then food, if you... Uh, calorie mates. I've had calorie mates in real life. They're fucking delicious. Um, imports from Japan. If you kill, a, kill an animal, it will degrade a lot faster. But these are cages. And so if you trank them, you put it in the cage, and then it, it lasts a lot longer. Um, and there's hidden stuff. Wait, what are you doing, boy? Oh, bug juice. I don't know what the fuck that does. Hell! Oh shit, fucking pulse. No, I didn't mean to do that. Damn, that hurt a lot. Okay. I can shoot this down, which I'm not worried about right now, because fucking. Uh. Oh shit. Um. Hornets will attack me. Sir. Um. Control wise, if you do just hold. You'll kind of do that, but people will still hear you come up when you get close. If you, that's with the analog stick. But when you use the directional pad, you walk, you actually sneak. So that's how to actually technically sneak up on people is to do this. But you, like I said, when there's not a bunch of enemies next to each other, you can just run up on people, press circle, and and slam their ass into the ground. But if you want to do, sometimes like you can get up to a person and then start creeping and then uh, hold them up enforce uh, information out of them or tell them to... I don't know if you can tell them to get down. I don't think you can in this one. No. I think you can just hold them up. Um, and I believe he locks onto them. So, like, when you hold out your gun, if you circle around them, he'll just... He'll he'll stay with his gun pointed at them. So we'll have a little fun with these guys. I'm gonna take my time a little bit, but I'm not gonna try to drag it on because man, does it! I've spotted two enemy soldiers. You know, there's a lot of cutscenes. They're probably KGB troops sent to guard Sokolov. Yeah. You can shoot the radios off out, which is really cool. I think even with the hush puppy that I have, which is nice, so you can prevent them from calling back up. I don't know what their line of sight is and how far they can really Your see. in Soviet territory is already a violation of international law. Can't let the Kremlin find out that the CIA and the American government are involved. Contact with the enemy. And see, that's why at least European Extreme kind of makes sense because if you get detected, it's just a mission failed. Because that's what they're painting this as: is you're not supposed to interact with anybody. The success of the mission depends on how well you use your This is your just kind of camouflage tutorial. I like how they don't know jack shit about her. You don't know her age, address. 
The uniform I got to piss already. Pick your uniform. I'm going to let them While play. The I got to pee. Option lets you change your face I already know all this. Choosing camouflage that blends in with your surroundings will help you conceal yourself more effectively. Also, don't forget that anything that moves will stand out in the jungle. If you just stand up and run around like an idiot, you're bound to be spotted. But if you crawl instead, you should be able to sneak by without being noticed. You can see how effective your camouflage is by looking at the camo index. The camo index shows how well your current camouflage blends in with the surrounding area. The higher the value, the harder you are to spot. Y'all still talking? Versa. See, I don't even know how the camouflage actually works. Like, I, I've genuinely never tested it. It does seem like, you know, there's only so close you can get to somebody anyways before they see you, but for the most part, um, like, I mean, he couldn't even see. Oh, shit, I can't tell where the fuck am I, oh, bitch. That's, there you go. Can't mark people in this. Metal Gear Solid 5 ruins you on that, you know. If you hold R1 and press L2, R2, you can do this. It's tuned for lean, which is really helpful because you can actually aim, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to let him go by because I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to hold him up. Let's do some, t I'm going to, actually, I'm going to slam his, well, there's a couple guys in this area. We got a little bit of, we'll have a little bit of fun with this guy. What's up? Actually, I don't. I also I love the idea you're changing camouflage. By the way, in the in inside of the uh, tree trunk. Why are you looking at me? Hmm? What's up? I think you actually have to. Who's there? Shit. Oh, I fucked that up. Ooh, that was close. You have to get up to him and then press that to to hold him up. Um, like I said, I think you can shoot that out even with this, right? Oh, shit, fuck. Or no, I can't. Okay, you can. Of course, you can also... I think you have to unequip stuff. Yeah, you press square, you can pick him up. Put him down. He'll uh, he'll typically sometimes drop some stuff. Mark twenty two bullets. I don't know how long that lasts. I don't remember where a ton of items and stuff are, so I'm not too worried about it. And I wish in this game you could. So if you do this and then you press forward, he immediately goes prone. I'm so used to in games being able to crouch and then walk and crouch, but in oh shoot, that? that was nobody, son. Sir. No radio? Okay, good. Anything? Oh, a grenade. What the fuck? Why would y'all give me a grenade right now? I mean, that's fine. Whatever. Oh, let me change my camo. Plus five. Eh, ain't got a really shit. DPM! What the fuck does DPM mean? I don't even know what that means. You can also... Oh, he actually... Huh. I figured he'd at least just run over there. Oh, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Alright, whatever. Okay. So, and I think you can... Can you kick people awake? No, no, that's not this game. You can wake people back up by just constantly picking them up and putting them down, but... Um, Metal Gear Solid Five is nice because you can just kick them and then uh, they stay on the ground and you point your gun out and hold them up. So I could have shot that hornet's nest down earlier, but... Technically, you don't know you can do that at that time. However, right here, they make it a point to say, hey, there's a little hornet nest. And you can shoot that down. Dude, how many 
fucking packets of camo does he have in that <laughs> backpack of his, though? Like, that's kind of impressive, you know? Like, when you actually think about it. I think you can pretty much just follow. Now, you can fall off the ledge here, which is kind of cool. And then uh, press triangle. He'll get back up. If you press L2, R2, you'll do pull-ups. And then you can increase your stamina. Uh, but, oh, shit. There's, there's never really a point where... You don't typically run out of stamina, so unless you're just doing it on purpose. Um, hopefully we can make it down here before they come back. Sometimes you can be trying, you can try to leave an area and then <laughs> the people will be coming back through the next zone. Uh, got a, whatever the hell that is, it's some kind of, it's a, it's a gun. It might be a type of assault. Oh shit, I'm like, wow, oh, fucking... Come on, come on. Where's my get up? There you are. Okay, let's hope I can press L2. Usually you can just press L2, R2. And he'll strafe left and right. But yeah, uh... Sometimes if you take too long, they might be coming back. And then you could just trigger an alarm. Because they're just... <laughs> they're just casually walking back. Okay, luckily they did not. Thank God. <laughs> Rasvet. Okay, I see an R and an A. Why is there a P? I wonder if they got accurate bird noises. Like, that's a bird that exists in Russia, not anywhere else. Alright, we got some motherfuckers here. We're gonna try to take them out. I'm just gonna run up and slam every. <laughs> Hopefully nobody sees. We'll find out. The security is pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Oh, tight. Oh, yeah. There are sentries I will not. The perimeter. I promise I will not butcher Solid Snake inside. voice. I'm not bad at it. I, I can actually, like, I can do it fairly well. No, that was terrible. Hold on. My voice is all fucked up. Never mind. I'll Your take that objective, back. objective, Sokolov, is inside the factory. They should be holding him in a room in the northeast section. Northeast section. Got it. Northeast section. Be Got careful. it. Your mission is to bring There's certain key down. phrases that are class that, like you can say a lot easier. Kind of Metal Gear. Do not approach Sokolov while in the alert phase. Right. No game. Oh, and one more thing, Snake. You mean there's more? <laughs> no, it's just that when you get to Sokolov, I want you to tell him something from me. And that is? Sorry for being so late. Is that all? Yes. Understood. Beginning my approach to the target. This guy's from the UK, but he lives in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, I think. <laughs> Excuse me. Alright. Let's get a little lay of the land. Creeping, I'm creeping. I don't remember how many guys are here. Let's just see how well I can run up on a motherfucker. Yeah, they and I don't know who hears, how well they hear. I mean, you can kind of just, you know. As long as somebody doesn't come by and see them, you're usually pretty good to just let the bodies hit the floor. Do you have one? No, you don't. Crawl through here. You can uh, come up and knock on things, which is nice. You can just do this. Poke your head out. Get a little shoddy boy. Because even I don't remember where all the enemies are. So I'm hoping I don't trigger anybody. I am not camouflaged out correctly. Oh, not. No, I don't want squares. Give me a tree bark. Wait, was that about the same? 
Yeah, I could change my face paint, but also whatever. Oh shit, who's here? Was it that guy? Sir, I'm gonna need you to just uh hang out for a little bit, you know. Oh, there's a guy. Can I, can I swing back around? Oh shit, I can't get up because Oop. That's what I mean. Controls, you know, kinda weird. up hey buddy sometimes you just kind of let them walk into your crosshair that's like the most convenient thing to do or not your crosshair your reticle or your uh sorry your um jesus what's it called? also it's really dark because <coughs> i also have a light you know that's one problem with having like a green screen yeah, that's pretty much everybody oh wait can't you get in lockers I think you can, yeah. There are certain lockers you can get in. Oh, that's how you can wake people up. I think you can just dive into them. That's what it is. Damn. Is he just standing on his tippy toes? What's up? No fucking shit. God damn it. Destroy the... You think... Okay, fuck it. You would think too many of those would also just uh, kill somebody. You can get, you know, too much trank, right? Oh, bird. Aha! I'll take you. Bird E. Oh. That's kind of cool. He does usually catch himself. Yeah, it's also so dark, I can't tell if there's any items anywhere. I think there's, like, items sometimes on boxes. Wow. It's actually kind of difficult to see. Um, and I think, last but not least, there is a... I think under this... Fuck, man. It, it's it's hard as shit for me to see, though. I can't. I can't get... I can't fucking... There we go. All right. Let's go. Yeah, between this light and, like, how technically dark the television is it's actually kind of <laughs> sports sports is kind of nice that brightened that shit up you must be so glad are you one of Vulcan's men Never get it from me. No. I'm a CIA agent. I've come to escort you back to the other side of the Iron Curtain. Your CIA? Yeah. I was sent by Major Zero. The I want to see if I can out just change ago. my brightness. Zero? I have a message from him. What is it? He said to tell you sorry for being so late. Did he now? What does it mean? It means he's a man of his word. I. But we've got no time. Swear to, to God, that didn't do anything. Arrived. Who's they? Well, that was backlight. Colonel Vulcan of Gru. You in the West know him as Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. Never heard of him. The blacks are just gone at this He's point. He's a member of the army's extremist faction, the man who seeks to seize control of the motherland. Ever since the Cuban Missile Crisis two years ago, Khrushchev has been pursuing a policy of peaceful coexistence with the West. Despite resistance and criticism from hawks in the army and the provincial authorities, Khrushchev has managed to suppress the opposition so far. But the failure of his agricultural policies has put him in a precarious position. And on top of that, the tragedy last November. 
President Kennedy's assassination. Precisely. In a sense, Khrushchev has lost his biggest partner, mm. and his power base is rapidly crumbling away. A certain group is plotting to use this opportunity to seize power by rallying the anti-government forces, overthrowing Khrushchev, and installing Brezhnev and Kosygin in his place. The mastermind behind this plot is Colonel Volgin of the Gru. He has control over another secret weapons research facility much like this one, OKB-812, known as the Granin Design Bureau, and is using it to further his plan. I could also play this game straight from Streamlabs because there's zero latency if I really wanted to. I have been developing here and use it as leverage in his bid for power. Hmm. Power bid. Intelligence says that they are going to make their move during the test. Then, the soldiers outside. Exactly. They wouldn't need that many men just to keep me inside. Hmm. No, no, their that's for sure. Were to prevent Colonel Volkin from capturing me. Hmm. Even if it meant killing me in the process. Dude, I came in with a Trank gun and got past them. Also, it's canon that technically you probably didn't even do any of that. <laughs> because of this cutscene coming up. Leave it to me. Also, my TV's doing the thing where the color's different. Oh, yeah. And I, I really like this. So, he hasn't... We've been hearing English because... We're hearing English. But neither of them has been speaking Russian. Sokolov is Russian. Remember this. Is that so? And he learned it from his mentor. America is truly a frightening country. <laughs> Having second thoughts. No. I have no love for this place. Let's go. But the gameplay has actually got that orange uh, kind of sepia tone to it. Whereas my... Television looks like everything's kind of white balanced properly. <laughs> Major, this is Snake. Sokolov is safe with me. He's doing fine. No injuries. Good work, Snake. Now hurry up and get Sokolov to the recovery point. We'll rendezvous with you there. The Roger. dark parts of this game when it's nighttime? Oh shit. To get past them. I see. What about the boss? I don't know. We lost contact with the boss some time ago. What happened? It's probably just a weak signal. Just hurry and get Sokolov out of there. Hmm. Yeah. It's all cutscene from here out. But also, introducing one of the best characters. One of the, the longest friendships in video game history. Do you mind, sir, getting behind me? Thank you. Because, like, obviously, I tranked all of them, but none of them are actually, like, he didn't, he didn't trank any of them. <laughs> it's, it's established that he just snuck by. Freeze! And then was immediately found. is the legendary boss. Huh? Yeah. God. Mother fucking we meet at last. Ocelot. Yes. Twirling his little gunsies. You. You're from the Ocelot unit of Spetsnaz. Huh. What's a crew soldier doing here? He's very specifically Ocelot. Soldier? Ocelot so much. 
He's the Ocelot commander. <laughs> That's Major Ocelot to you. And don't you forget it. Also speaking Russian. Get out of here. None of these people are speaking English. Ocelot never lets his prey escape. What? I don't know why none of them shot him. And it's again one of those things I assume it happened so fast that nobody could see it really happening. Yeah. He has fucking spurs on. Like he's such a fucking movie buff. The dude loves movies. Damn. Oh, he just pushed that dude over with his foot. That's harder. That's that's hard to do. That boy probably weighs like two fifty. Can't say it feels good to kill a comrade, even if it is for the Gru. <gasps> Sokolov, take cover. I just realized something. Huh. You're not the boss, are you? No. None of them are outfitted for the jungle, by the way. This motherfucker has a, a scarf or a pasmina. <laughs> that gun. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not the boss, then die. <clears throat> That boy got so scared. And so did he. Major. Why none of these guys have have sh shot me, I don't know. It's not that hard. I was completely wide open during that entire time. Movies have a hard time with that too. Oh, look at that hair freak out on the back of my neck. Oh, it's it's flipping. There you go. And he's out. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck. I'd like to look up this technique that he did. Because he comments on it. He's like, you ejected the first round by hand. Why? Why is that even a thing? Yeah, why? I see what you were trying to do. But testing a technique you've only heard about in the middle of battle wasn't very smart. You were asking to have your gun jam on you. I gotta look that Besides, up. Besides, I don't think you're cut out for an automatic in the first place. You tend to twist your elbow to absorb the recoil. That's more of a revolver technique. You filthy American dog! <laughs> 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 You whooped your ass, dog. But that was some fancy shooting. You're pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, love 
Lancelot so much. He's so cool. Yeah, that's that little backpack that I have all those camouflages in. Is that a one-piece camouflage suit, by the way? <laughs> I'm not actually sure. Is that a jacket and a pant, or separate, or are those? Is Major, that a onesie? Do you read me? I read you. Snake, you all right? Yeah, I'm cool. I've run into a few snags. These guys were after Sokolov too. Apparently, they were taking orders from a Gru colonel named Volgan. A Gru colonel. Part of an internal Soviet power struggle, according to Sokolov. Something between the KGB and Gru. Between Khrushchev's supporters and Volgans. Sokolov I like how they say KGB, the but they KGB pronounce that Gru. By Gru? Instead Snake, of GRU. It sounds like this could be even hotter than Cuba. I don't like it. Something about the whole thing stinks. I agree. You'd better hurry. Sokolov ran off by himself, but I'll catch up to him. We're counting on you. All right. So that was the introduction to Ocelot. Uh, again, another uh, fun thing that this world does is uh, you can create time paradoxes. If I whip out my knife and I kill him, um, it'll say you created a time paradox. Oh, does he drop anything? I've never done this. <gasps> What's he drop? Mousetrap. Yo, wake up, dog. We're gonna, we're gonna become best friends. You just don't realize it yet. Why does he only drop a mouse trap? I'm gonna take him with me. <laughs> What's up? Nothing? Alright, cool. Yeah, I think you can do this and typically you'll wake people up like you'll bump into them, but no, not, not yet. Alright, let's go fucking find what's his name. Even though I think as soon as we exit this area, we find him. Yeah, again, this whole opening is still like kind of an introduction. I mean, it's it is an introduction, but also kind of a tutorial. So, oh yeah, never mind. It's this right, it's right here. So it's definitely going to be the longest slash like most unproductive part, unfortunately. You okay? Those men were from the Ocelot unit, Spetsnaz. Yeah. Yes. I took care of them. The best crew has to offer. I love that. They're coming for me. If that's the best, I ain't worried. I finished. Calm down. I'll get you out of here. You know I promise. Saying, dog? And we've got some of the best backup we could ask for. Look. And there's the Metal Gear. Spoiler alert. That's what this whole game series is about. That's what they were making you build. Kind of. Yes. Oh, I forgot our one. My bad. IRBM. It can launch nuclear missiles from that kind of terrain. Oh, yes. And without support from friendly units. A nuclear-equipped tank capable of operating solo. Mm -hmm. Is that thing finished? No. This is only the end of Phase 1. It won't be truly finished until we complete Phase 2. Phase 2? The weapon's true form. If it is completed and the colonel gets his hands on it, it will mean the end of the Cold War. The end of the Cold War? Yes. And then the Age of Fear will truly begin. World War. That's no bueno, dog. no choice but to cooperate. <laughs> I didn't want to die. I don't blame you. I wanted to see my wife and child again in America. Please, take me to America, quickly. They cannot complete it without my help. Got it. Let's go. Yeah, that's all right. Come on. Just there you go. I mean, you can see in front of you, so I don't know why you're walking across a bridge like that like you know there's nobody over there like you can you got 2020 vision dog like there <laughs> yeah look there's nothing now obviously yeah I'll, this fog is about to roll in but i'm just saying like he could have been like let's go and they run and then like i don't know it, he just you know this is kojima trying to make a movie we all we all know and love it 
her shoulder strength is amazing. So. Good work, Jack. Stop using my real name, dog. Sokolov comes with me. <laughs> the bees. <laughs> Not the bees. Hornets. <laughs> my bad, hornets. Sir, I'm gonna need you to. Are the hornets picking him up? Now that I think about it. Is that what's happening here? It's weird watching the game load like that. Metal Gear Solid 5 would just move the camera around everywhere. There's the pain and the fear. My friends, let us fight together again. Didn't she say have you don't have any friends? We will fight with you once more. And we got the Welcome end. Back, boss. Now that all five of us are together. It's time we go to the depths of hell itself. It's raining blood. Is he crying? Ah, what a joyful scene. Colonel Vogan. Welcome to my country. And to my unit. What is this? I'm defecting to the Soviet Union. Sokolov is a little gift for my new hosts. Recoilless nuclear warheads. How the fuck did she get a hold of a nuclear warhead? These will make a fine gift for me. This can't be happening. I don't think she was really on that sub like they said she was. One of your disciples? Are we taking him with us? No, this one is still just a child. Too pure for us cobras. He has not yet found an emotion to carry into battle. What are you talking about? That's just a trink gun. I mean, it's Think not you like can it's... Pull the trigger. Like, you could. Like, it's not going to hurt. It's not going to kill her. And she just took apart your gun. Damn. I love it. Here's the here's the best advice I can give when it comes to CQC. Don't attack. Don't ever be the attacker. Wait for someone to attack you because you guys are gonna get your ass whooped if you are the attacker. See my face. Sorry. I gotta piss again. Fuck. Can't let him live. Oh man. Chef finds out about this, we're finished. I 
I do like how even though this game was put onto a Blu-ray disc, it still slows itself down. <laughs> Trying to handle the effects or the number of people. You would think the problems of the PS2 wouldn't transfer over, but they do. I guess, I guess it would be the software they made. It would be the engine that ran on. Not the PS2. Do you like my camouflage? I changed mid-battle. <laughs> so, it's kind of weird. Oh, also, I just realized that headband is kind of bluish tint. Hmm. I know what happens. I'm going to go pee again. to Sokolov's research facility. Shagohad is ours. Yeah, it's weird. I thought uh, I thought the I thought the bandana he was wearing was uh, more of that olive drab color. Uh, but according to that, that shit is kind of dark navy blue. All right, well, so our mentor just betrayed us. Thank you. Much appreciated. I don't know how I go on with my life now, but that's fine. It's fine. I mean, she did give you a lesson earlier about friendships and soldiers and enemies. But I don't know why she called him called them her friends. They ain't your friends. They could they could betray you in a moment's notice, just like you did to me. That's just rude. Alright, I might skip past this because Snake, this is me? just the uh, medic yeah. tutorial, so I'll wait just till it gets to paramedic when she's telling us Snake, what to do. Listen to me. You need emergency medical treatment. Can I already you know move? how to do all this. You've got to get those wounds treated. Hang in there. All right, let's get you fixed up. Yeah. So, oh, wait. Hold on. Can you just start to play? Okay. You hold triangle and he'll just do that. So yeah, oh, we're we're already. I'm, I'm, I'll skip past that because I know how to do all that shit. Cure. All right, we got a bunch of shit. We're gonna fucking put some disinfectants, some styptic, some some bandages. We're gonna suture this shit up. Uh, that is a cut. That is gonna be the exact same thing. Most of these are not hard. It's a fun little mini system. Like if you get shot, there will be bullets that you have to pull out and stuff like that. This is just a bone fracture, which is a splint and a bandage. And then everything else is literally, I think, a cut. What the fuck? That sounded weird. Wait, what? Oh, bone fracture. Fuck, I was putting on the wrong one. Oop, my bad. There you go. I was wondering why I made a different noise. It was like whoop, but then the other ones were like whoosh. The whoosh were wrong. I'm gonna need you to put that elbow back in place, dog. I like how, like, as soon as he grabs it, it's like. Rrr. How much did he used to weigh when she said you lost weight? Because obviously, I mean, he's he's a he's a large fella, especially in Peace Walker and Metal Gear Solid Five, dude. That his quads are massive. That boy is muscle. That boy is proper chonk. Yeah, 
Yeah, because even in the uh, even in my thumbnail, like I made it a purpose to get a, like a green one, because I could have sworn he had a green. But that doesn't make sense. If the bosses was always navy blue, then it should have been a dark navy blue. We don't get to see him getting Fultoned, unfortunately. Oh, I missed the R1. I don't remember if the Sorrow shows up. I can't remember if you see, like, a little ghost. Also, I like this because, I mean, obviously, he, Sokolov talked about it not being completed. That's not very convenient. It, it can launch IACBMs or IRBMs, ICBMs, whatever. No, ICBMs, inter, intercontinental ballistic missiles um, from any terrain. That motherfucker looks like it needs to be carried somewhere first, and that's not very convenient. I like how she straight up just didn't kill him, though. Because he's like, he needs to die. She's like, nah. I'll just toss him over the edge. It'd be a whole different game if she'd have just killed him from the beginning. Or if you shot her with the tranquilizer dart. It was a trank. I don't know why you wouldn't shoot. Can you pull the trigger? Yeah. It'll put you to sleep. So this is what threw me off before. <clears throat> He's so butthurt. He talked about it's, it, it sucked to kill his fellow comrades, but what is about to happen kind of goes against that, which is really weird. So To the boss and her cobras, I have both Sokolov and the Shagohad. What are we going to do with the girl? Who is she? Apparently, she's Sokolov's woman. Why would Volgan not know? Did they just pick her up? Where the fuck has she been? They got fucking golden eye noises in the background. <coughs> I assume was is that a shotgun shell? Is that what that is? Is that like I open it up and I hit you in the side of the head and it just explodes and kills you? Because I don't think she was trying to use that on herself. I think she was gonna reach for it and like hit him with it. But he's like, bitch, take that shit back. Don't bother me. Shall we take her back to the base? Perhaps we should. That's also cool. We have no further use for Sokolov's research facility. So this is what I mean. I think it's time I gave this marvelous new toy a try. He has a problem with... Even if they are our enemies, they're still our countrymen. But it won't be me that pulled the trigger. But he also just had no problem shooting we the... Are friend, the... the American defector. You're going to nuke your fellow Russians? <laughs> Colonel. Even though he just kind of did, I guess he uh, he does he regrets it in the situation. I don't know. That's a weird justification in somebody's brain. He's like, why? He's like, yeah, you justified it to yourself, but now you have a problem with him launching this. Yo, he eyeballed that shit. By the way, he just looked and pulled the trigger. Also, what the fuck is on? Oh, that's the oh, that was the Fulton. And also, I don't think this is ever brought up. Did he just get loads of radiation poisoning? I mean, if you're that close and you can see that, 
And they even commented the area is radiated. I'm pretty sure that radiation spreads, so shouldn't... Shouldn't... Shouldn't Snake have been pelted with a shit ton of radiation? Alright, let's save. And yeah, like I said, Ocelot's little... There are fellow... Yeah, but you just also did it. You did it because you had to? <laughs> Is that what the justification? Whereas, like, he didn't really have to shoot the nuke? Oh, yeah. I skipped this at the beginning because I knew it was going to pop up. Fuck yeah. Very... This is James Bond, and I completely forgot. Because they tried to play this at the beginning when you start, but I'm like, yeah, there's like, give it a second. It start like, that feels like a proper, like, James Bond opening and then the music plays. So good. I think this is the only one that also got this style of opening, if I'm not mistaken. And then they're showing parts of the game as well. It's it's funny how somebody can get the resources to create games inspired by wanting to just make movies, but get them made easier than getting a movie made. And I've never actually looked that up now that I think about it. Like the difference between the price of Marvel's Avengers. I guess that's a, that's kind of really high up there. Because even, you know, there's $50 million movies, you know, $100, $100 million movies, $200 million, whatever. And how much it costs to produce a video game, which even when you get main act, even with actual act named actors nowadays, still might only cost you 200000 Right? You're not even... You're not even you're not even close to a million dollar budget and Hollywood's doing a hundred million dollar budget. So I guess there is a giant separation, but it is interesting. It feels like, man, if you ever just want the chance to make a movie, but can't actually get the funds to make a Hollywood movie, just make a video game because you're, <laughs> you're more likely to be able to get it done. This is also a week later, by the way, after uh, putting that elbow back into place. And after this cutscene, this will be the end for part one. It's very much just the, the intro to the game. But there's a lot of setup. And after this is where it actually opens up. Infinite ammo. I think I might have that on my European Extreme profile. Yeah. So how does it feel to be a patient in one of the most advanced ICUs in the world? Would you do me a favor and tell the suits about visiting hours? 
I'll never get better with them assaulting me day and night with their questions. Must be part of the top brass's inquiry. More like an interrogation. According to them, I'm a traitor and an accomplice to the boss's defection. They're just looking for a scapegoat. Yeah, obviously. Does that mean they're after you too? Especially when you haven't seen her in five years, 72 hours, and... Does this mean the fox is going to die? However no. much time this has passed. still one step ahead of the hound. The reason I came to see you today, Jack, it's time for Fox to clear its name. Still using my real name, dog. The situation has changed. We still got a chance to come out of this one alive. I like how they at least went with Jack instead of John. If he'd have been named John Shepard, I would have flipped my shit. This morning, I had a meeting with the CIA. They decided when they're going to execute us? No. Something even bigger. Yesterday, the White House received an unexpected call. President Johnson? Yes, I hear you, Mr. Chairman. It was a hotline call from Khrushchev to President Johnson. From the head of the Soviet Union? That's right. A few days ago, one of our country's main design bureaus, okay, D754, was destroyed in a nuclear explosion. At about the same time, our anti-aircraft radar picked up a signature that appeared to come from one of your military aircraft. Does any of this sound familiar to you? In retaliation, I have placed our armed forces on secondary alert. Depending on your response, I may be left with no choice but to order the military to maximum alert and unleash Armageddon. With the help of your predecessor, I was able to survive the Cuban incident. But my power is not as great as it once was. If I am to survive this crisis, I must have your full cooperation. I should have contacted you myself. Did you know that one of our soldiers defected to your country a week ago? No. So you haven't heard that. The man who arranged the defection was a group colonel by the name of Yevgeny Borosovich Volgin. Volgin? Of the Brezhnev faction. Go on. Who is the soldier? Her name is the boss. She's a living legend. During World War II, she was the one who led us to victory in that war. In Russia, you know her as Voyevoda. You mean the boss? The mother of your special forces? Yeah, that's the one. And she took two miniature nuclear shells along with her. The boss took two miniature nuclear shells. I'm afraid so. I believe they were a gift for her new hosts. The Davy Crockett Atomic Battle Group delivery system was completed two years ago. Serious problems were found with the launcher's range and precision. Although they were mass-produced, they've never been deployed in battle. But Sokolov's research facility was completely wiped out. The whole area is polluted. I can only offer you my deepest condolences over this terrible tragedy. So, the boss, with Colonel Volgen's help, stole two experimental nuclear shells and took them with her as a gift when she defected. Then, shortly thereafter, Sokolov's design lab, a top secret military research facility, was destroyed by one of these weapons. Am I right so far? I mean, that's a normal like yeah, reaction to like reconfirm everything you just heard, but you can tell s there are some dialogue things that it's just like you didn't need to repeat that. You're just that's repeating. We were not Playing this game the first time ever, a lot of fun. But when you go back, you're like, okay. The quirkiness and weird parts are fine, but shit like that, it's like I'm gonna need you to get it was together. Not acting under your orders. That's correct. You expect me to believe that this was all the work of a single soldier? I don't it actually, know actually was. To tell you. It actually was. That's not even a lie. Insist that this is all a ploy on your part. I've said it once, and I'll say it again. Our government had nothing to 
to do with it. And I would like dearly to believe it. However, I'm afraid my power over the military has weakened since the Cuban incident. I will need some kind of proof that this was not the action of the American government. You have one link. You must catch the boss yourselves and recover the remaining nuclear device. Then, you must find some way to prove your innocence. Prove our innocence? Yes. Preferably something painful. Prove to me that this is not merely another one of your tricks. The boss should be close to Colonel Volga. How about a little co-action? I would not expect too much if I were you. The political situation here is unstable. And Colonel Volkin is a member of the Brezhnev faction, which seeks to topple my government. One week. You have only one week. And if it is not too much to ask, do something about Volkin as well. What is that supposed to mean? Nothing. It means nothing. Call it a modest gentleman's agreement to ensure our continued relationship. What if we can't prove our innocence? be unable to restrain the military, I will be ousted, and they will seek their revenge. A nuclear attack on the United States? I leave the disposal of this situation entirely to your discretion, Mr. President. Hmm. Disposal? If you fail, it will mean the beginning of a new world war. Put it simply, in order to avoid a full-scale nuclear conflict, we have to prove that America was not involved in that explosion. And eliminating the boss ourselves will prove America's innocence? Right. The higher-ups have decided that you're the only one capable of pulling this off. You were her last apprentice. Screw this one up, and we'll both be six feet under. There's no choice. I love the like eight millimeter film <laughs> filter. Oh, the KGB has promised to lend us one of their communications. No, no, the controller died. So the cutscenes are so long. The controller died. Here we go. Ah, That's yeah. Good. They've also put us in touch with a couple of insiders. You mean Kikuchi? There was a defection in September 1960. Anybody to know every snake is horny on me? You mean the two NSA codebreakers who went over to the Soviet Union? Precisely. Since then, they've apparently been training with the KGB for exactly this kind of situation. Their code names are Adam and Eva. I've been told that Adam has infiltrated Volgan's ranks. This is always good. I think, yeah, those are, those are two actual people You'll need to rendezvous in history that did that. All right, going back to the exact same spot. At night time this time. And uh, we'll see how well I can see the forest. Control. Unidentified aircraft detected. Altitude 30,000 feet. I don't know why they give you control. Not even like it's really helpful. I'm about to lose it. I like how this is somewhat sanctioned this time. But there were still a couple aircrafts who were like, hey, there's some motherfucker in our uh, in our airspace. <laughs> like, all right. That shouldn't technically be a problem. And we're off. Also, that thing has to self-destruct, right? Because again, used to, even though there's a little bit more, a little more sanctioned, it's still not. I mean, that's a fucking. That's evidence. <laughs> that is a large aircraft. That's just hanging out in the forest. How's that? Uh, how's that elbow, dog?
And so we're back. We're back again. This is Snake. Do you read me? Loud and clear. Glad to see you landed safely. I got blown pretty far off target. Snake, let's go over your mission objectives one more time. Rescue one Sobel. more time. Find out what's happened to the Shagahod, then destroy it. And finally, eliminate the boss. Eliminate the boss? This mission will be codenamed Operation Snake Eater. Because I'll be taking on the boss in our Cobra unit, right? Don't forget about Colonel Vulcan. I'm not a hired killer. I know, but that was the Kremlin's demand. Demand? You mean it wasn't just a request? What's it to us if the Khrushchev regime is threatened by the Colonel and his faction? If supporting the current regime helps us avoid a nuclear exchange, then that's what we'll do. And what are the CIA's demands? Our priorities are the rescue of Sokolov and the destruction of the Shagahod. Roger that, Major Tom. And that's something I, I always now, forgot about. He's your CIA. It turns out You're not even like special forces. He's, you know, he talked about he was with the Green Berets and stuff like that. But well, the like, truth is, when I chose my code, your CIA. I picked the wrong one. The wrong one? Yeah, this is this is. Did funny. you ever see the movie The Great Escape? It came out last year. Oh, I must have missed that one. Anyway, it's based on a true story about prisoners who escaped from a POW camp in Nazi Germany. The prisoners dig three tunnels as part of their plan but the Nazis find two of the tunnels before they're finished. The prisoners succeed in escaping by using the last remaining tunnel. The names of those three tunnels were Dick, Harry, and Tom. I get it. You used the name of the tunnel they escaped in as your code name because you thought it would bring you good luck. Yes, that's exactly right. At least, that was the plan. That's not but, right. That's not a but I got idea. the name wrong. The one they escaped in was Harry. Tom was one of the unlucky tunnels. It was discovered by the Nazis before it was finished. Good job. So I you're it's solely again, your make sure. it's solely your I fault even though. the actual film from the movie company. That yeah, everything it went doesn't wrong. Sound like the greatest name to use. So what should I call you? Hmm. You know, let's just use Zero. Is he going like to switch back? Doing all along. All right then. Major Zero it Major is. Zero. There we go. We'll start over from square 1. From square 0. My frequency is 140. Point eight five. Oh, I almost forgot. Paramedic is with us again on this mission. Is this her last chance too? If we fail, she'll have her medical license revoked. It's more or less the same kind of fate. Her frequency is the same as during the Virtuous mission. 145.73. She'll be recording your mission data as well, just like the last time. That frequency is also the same. 140.96. And there's one more person on your support team. His name is Mr. Sigint. He's an what the fuck does that mean? Weapons and equipment technology. Is that a real last name? Going up or, against oh. some of the world's most advanced weaponry when you infiltrate the research facility. If you have any questions, just ask him. His frequency is 148.41. Mr. Sigint. Got it. What is a Sigint? Adam, your KGB is that contact, a real is last waiting name? for you at the abandoned Sigint. factory up ahead. The same factory oh. was being held in last week. Yes. Signals intelligence. The way for you to rescue Sokolov. How will I know this Adam guy when I see him? You'll know once you reach the factory. The whole area has been polluted by the hmm. fallout from that nuclear blast. No one else would dare come close. The password is Who are the Patriots? And Lali Lulelo. Lali Lulelo. Gotcha. All right, so we've officially established the Patriots and Lali Lulelo. The standard Fox procedure was procure on-site weapons acquisition. The circumstances are different this time. You're now on an official mission for the United States government. It would be necessary to make your presence known to a certain extent, to the Khrushchev regime at the very least. But remember, so I got my 1911 mission. Snake, if you fail this mission, it will mean an all-out nuclear war. Keep that in mind and proceed with extreme caution. Understood. Commencing Operation Snake Eater. Oh, is paramedic not? Oh, hold on. I think when I save paramedic, so yeah. Uh, they're going to have a little conversation. We'll just go ahead and say, fucking do it, whatever. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go to save. I think she is going to talk about herself. Paramedic. I would just, I would just like to save, but you know. It's been a week, hasn't it? Let them talk. Four days, actually. And then we'll 
I visited you in the hospital. You were still unconscious, though. Uh, then you must have seen me naked. Yeah, but you were all wrapped up in bandages and tubes, so I couldn't do anything but look. Better luck next time. Mm, let's hope so. But seriously, don't forget that you were like that until just yesterday. In fact, you really shouldn't even be on this mission. Keep an eye on your stamina gauge. If you start to run low, I wish I had my own bio. Eat something to replenish yourself. Like I can see all them. And try not but I wish it said like hurt. snake and if I could see my age. I don't even know actually know how old he is. Immediately and treat yourself using He's got to be like Yeah, yeah. 30. I can see you still know how to nag. You're welcome. And I can see you still don't know when to keep your mouth shut. Maybe Damn. so. By the way, I heard you're going to lose your medical license if this mission fails. Yes. She's from Boston. There's talk of that, but the mission won't fail, will it? Of course not. She doesn't have an accent. She ain't from Boston. I believe in you. But you know what? I really don't care about my medical license. Didn't they use that to force you to participate in this operation? No, I volunteered. Why? So that I could watch over you. Snake, you're the best. Dude, medical licenses are hard to achieve. That takes a lot of time. The fact that you don't give a shit. Someone has to stop you from getting into trouble. What the fuck would you do if you weren't a medical personnel? So that's why I volunteered. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better guardian angel than me, right? Thanks. Stop right there. You can thank me when you get back. Again, you can talk to all these people. I assume you, like, when something goes wrong, like, if you pick up a new weapon, call Sigint. If you get find a new fu fungus, call Paramedic. Like, uh, there's just so much shit in terms of dialogue that you can get that I have never, ever attempted because I'm not... That's the kind of shit I look up on okay, good luck, Snake. YouTube. Thanks. All right, cool. Yeah, that's going to be it for this. The The opening of this game is, you know, a hell of a lot. Uh, now the game has technically officially opened. I wonder if I'm in like, the same camo that they actually I ended in. No, because they changed the face and they put Tiger Stripe. Yeah, Tiger Stripe. But yeah, that's going to be it for this. Um, this game is not as bad. This game is not as bad. Oh, most of the Metal Gears actually have a decent amount of gameplay. They do have long cutscenes. The opening to this is kind of the longest. From here on out, there's a lot of gameplay in Metal Gear Solid 3. Um, same Metal Gear Solid, uh, 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 Peace Walker, uh, five, they really put a lot of gameplay in one and two still also have a decent amount of gameplay mixed, uh, two definitely mixed gameplay and cutscenes. but four, wait till we get to four. Cause we're going to be in for a long fucking ride. That's basically, that's less of a let's play and a let's watch. Um, because as far as I remember, that bitch is like three hours, maybe four hours of gameplay, depending on how fast you play, and like 17 hours of cutscene. Because I could have sworn I remember like playing the game, and it was like, okay, it took me like 20 hours to beat. Maybe, uh, yeah, I was like, I think it took me like 20 hours to beat. And then I played through it again and skipped through all the cutscenes, and I was like three or four hours of gameplay. So we'll see. But that is going to be it for this. Thank you for joining me, and uh, let's play through the entire Metal Gear saga. Doses.